And I, my friends, am looking forward to this conversation with Van Con immensely. He's given me the tip me the wink, give me a clue as to what films we're covering. And we're going to be talking about, well, get a load of this A Man Who Ate Human Livers, Brothels, Puppets. Oh, and by the way, the fantastic Robert De Niro meeting the equally fantastic Al Pacino. All that and more, courtesy of Van Con on our freeview film recommendation slot. Good morning, Van. So I'm very excited by this. And you've gone straight for a comedy classic of the modern era, an absolute masterpiece, in my opinion. Good morning, Van. How are you doing? I am all good, Mr. Ross. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm doing Bad Boys after the weekend. We've got the Bad Boys 4 premiere, so I'm, I'm really hype uh, this week, as you can imagine. And, of course, this first movie I've never been able to talk about before on, on radio, so I'm looking forward to discussing Team America World Police with you, which is on uh, Channel 4 tonight at 11.05. And I, I know you've seen this. I love this movie. Matt Damon, maybe not quite as keen, but anybody involved in it is deserves their own Team America honorary Oscar every single year. It is, shall we say, Say, if you're easily offended, flip and change channels. It's not for you. It's a great film, though. Yeah, the story for this one goes that during the heyday of South Park in the late 90s, Trey Stone and Matt Parker fell into a, a pattern, the creators of South Park, fell into a pattern where they would spend their days dropping acid and watching reruns of Thunderbirds on, I think, BBC America. They tried to buy the rights to Thunderbirds to make a movie. They were shot down uh, because they were already developing the god-awful Jonathan Frakes live-action one that came out in 2004. Oh, with Ben Kingsley, that was a disaster. Was What a stinker that was. Exactly that. So Stone and Parker decided instead, screw it, we'll make our own version with blackjack and hookers. And that's literally what they did. They went and made Team America, World Police, one of the most offensive movies ever made. So offensive, in fact, that it was a real challenge to find a clip for you for this. So literally, it's it's a Thunderbirds-like organization, very, um, very pro-America. This is set at the height of the war on terror. And I've got a clip for you, as I say. I've managed to find you a clip. This is um, the new the new recruit to the team, an actor named Gary, being brought on side by the team leader, Spotswood. So I've got a clip for you, as I say. This is Channel 4 tonight at 5 past 11. You've never seen it. This is one of the 21st century comedy classics, and if you have seen it, you know why you want to rewatch it. So I give you Team America World Police. Matt Damon. Hello, young man. Congratulations on a terrific performance. Oh, thank you. I don't believe we've met, Mr... The name is Spotswood. Well, nice to meet you. And you are Gary Johnston. All-American actor who graduated Iowa University summa cum laude with a double major in theater and world languages. You've been at the top of every acting class since you were a child. Top gun actor. Hey, hold on a second. Are you from Hollywood? I have an incredible offer for you, Gary. If you're interested, follow me this way. I love that. Drama and world languages. Not even specific languages. Specific <laughs> la- that was a double major. That's a great film. Gags are every second on that film. That's a masterpiece. Now, my film could not be more different. In the week that's the countdown to the commemorations of the 80th anniversary of D-Day, I thought I'd recommend tonight, you've probably seen it, folks, Christopher Nolan's remarkable film from 2017, Dunkirk. Almost of the day the Dunkirk film evacuation um, happened five years before, four years rather before D-Day. So we were booted out of France, 400,000 troops, some British, some French, some from other um, European countries, stranded on the beach. Had they been captured, the war would have been pretty much over there and then. In the end, as we all know, not just the Navy, not just the Air Force, but the little people, the little boats were mobilised to get those uh, soldiers off the beach. It's a kind of portmanteau from some great people in this. Tom Hardy, Killian Murphy, Kenneth Branagh, some great actors in it. Blink at Mark Rylance is fantastic and he's playing a very understated, quiet hero in it. It is the story of Dunkirk. It is old-fashioned almost in the sense that it's kind of, it rouses the, not the patriotic spirit, the spirit against fascism and dictatorship everywhere. It's on 1040 tonight on BBC One. I mean, it's not your standard Christopher Nolan film, this one, although it has got some amazing performances, I think, almost carriers. Uh, Barry Keogh is in it, isn't the chap from that uh, rather rude bathwater film turns up in it? Very much so, yeah, I think he's Mark Rylance's son, but uh, this has got that, that vintage note, and loves to play with time, and what you get here is, I think you get land, air, and sea, and each of the different subplots has a different sense of time, they move at different speeds, but you get that ticking clock all the way through. We did this for Oscar and I, didn't we, about seven or eight years ago, you and I? We did, in fact, you hear the ticking clock now in the trailer for Dunkirk, BBC One, tonight, 10.40, do yourself a favour, tune into this one and be uplifted, as well as being oh, yeah. deeply moved, an amazing movie. Here we go. They need to send more ships. Every hour 
the enemy pushes closer. They've activated the civilian boats. Civilians? We need destroyers. Where are we going? Dunkirk. I'm not going back. We know they will die. You're weekend sailors, not the bloody navy. You should be at home. There's no hiding from this, son. We have a job to do. Turn it around! We shall fight on beaches. We shall fight on the landing grounds. We shall never surrender. We shall never surrender. We shall never surrender. And from those uh, ports on the south coast, of course, where four years later we would have the embarkation of the Operation Overlord mm. fleets for the Normandy invasion. That's my first recommendation. You're taking us well to an absolute crime classic, a caper classic with added Michael Mann, De Niro and Pacino. Oh, yes. I mean, this is basically film Twitter's favourite movie. It's, of course, Michael Mann's 1995 Heat, which, as you as you said when we were before we came on, um, is effectively a remake of Michael Mann's own earlier film, L.A. Takedown, in which you've got the L.A. cop hunting, you know, the, the career criminal. Cop being Al Pacino, crim being uh, De Niro, and you, you just get that great sequence in which the pair simply sit down across from each other at a coffee shop and discuss their lives. It is an absolute banger. It's got one of the great action sequences of the 90s when you get the bank robbery, one of the most realistic depictions of gunfire uh, ever depicted in a movie. Uh, great supporting cast that included John Voight, uh, Danny Trejo, Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer. Great film. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're getting a sequel to this developed at the moment because uh, Michael Mann wrote his own book, uh, Heat, imaginatively entitled Heat 2. Um, they're making a movie of that at the moment with, it's a prequel effectively, it's going to have Adam Driver in the, uh, in the, uh, the, the, the De Niro role, it's wow. going to have uh, Austin Butler in the Val Kilmer role, it's really going to be something. Uh, and great movies are showing this on Saturday night at 9pm. It's a, it's a long one, it's like a two and a half to three hour, uh, movie, but it, it needs it for how epic it is. And I've got for you, because I'm, I don't know if you know this about me, Paul. I'm, I'm a sucker for a bit of Al Pacino flying off the handle, and I've got his hey, great moment. Not shouty Al, but a shouty Al actually. Oh yeah. Away. Okay, here we go then. Oh yeah. Where, where, hoo-ha. <laughs> when can we see Hoo Ha, Mr. Pacino, and Robert De Niro, and the rest of the gang? When's this one on? It's on great movies. You were saying. Great movies, 9 p.m. Saturday night. I've got, I've got for you the great Al Pacino outburst from this movie whilst he's interrogating a suspect played by Simpsons alumni Hank Azaria. So just enjoy this vintage Pacino moment. You are extradited to Newark on a New Jersey warrant for smuggling cigarettes up from North Carolina three years ago, or you go to work for us. Cut and dry. That is it. <laughs> Charlene Shaherless. Who? 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 Were you f***ing now? The lady you've been talking dirty to on telephone every day last week. Yeah, all right. You know what? You can't tie me to her. Yeah, well, who needs to? Because your ass is on a plane back to New Jersey, jag off. Oh, man. I just... Why'd I get mixed up with that bitch? Because she got a great ass! And you got your head all the way up it! Jesus. He's slightly angry, isn't he? <laughs> I'd help him out rather than go back to Newark and face that counterfeit or whatever it was, cigarette smuggling charge. Now, I've recommended this film before. I make no apology for recommending it again. I, w- I was almost going to go for on film four tomorrow night, Friday, Saturday, 6.15 p.m., Catch Me If You Can, the great 2002 Tom Hanks is in it, of course, Leonardo DiCaprio, I don't know if I spill, but that's a great film. I prefer, though, as we approach the summer, because summer starts on June the 1st, meteorologically, let's talk about the winter. ITV4, tomorrow night... Absolute classic, or sorry, tomorrow afternoon, 2.40 in the afternoon, Jeremiah Johnson from 1972, directed by Sidney Pollack, starring amongst others, well, Will Gear plays the title, sorry, Robert Redford plays the title character, Will Gear's in it as well, though, of course, as his mountain man sidekick, based on a true story of a man who was born back in the 1820s, he fought in the Mexican-American War, had a problem with his superior officers, he may have killed one, in fact, jumped ship and retired to the mountains, and wanted to be alone. And then, as things happened and changed, he was married to a Native American woman who it's believed was killed by the Crow tribe, and he became known as the Crow Killer, also known as Jeremiah Liver Eater Johnson. They have claimed he's been his 300 lives fighting that particular um, North American tribe, First Peoples, we call them now. This is a great film, very slow, beautifully shot, 
didn't make much money. The, the trailer marketing campaign was appalling. They tried to sell it as a new kind of Butch Cassidy. They put some dodgy old country up tempo song. He likes the snow. He wants to go. All that kind of rubbish. No, the film is much more elegiac than that. And, and quite kind of ambivalent in his attitude, really, towards the, the main character. Although Robert Redford is fantastic. It's obviously a passion project for him because he's covered himself in the mountain man's beard. Rather than a trailer, and I say this is on 2.40 tomorrow afternoon on ITV4. Set the record for it, folks, because you'll probably be out and about shopping or car booting or whatever. In the, in the little clip I've got, rather than a trailer, it's when, after a long time on his own, he encounters another mountain man, much older than him, who's been reduced to basically rags in the snow, and they share a rabbit, and they have a conversation about what they know about the world down below them, below the mountains, which turns out to be not very much indeed. This will give you a flavour of the film, punctuated by sporadic bursts of incredible violence and just horrendous scenes of kind of mutilation of people. But, by and large, this is the tenor of the film. It's about moving, creating a new America as you try and move away from the America you're creating. Jeremiah Johnson, 2.40 tomorrow afternoon, ITV4. Slow things down. Would you happen to know what month of the year it is? No, I truly wouldn't. I'm sorry, Pilgrim. March. Maybe April. March, maybe. I don't believe April. But it's a long time going, huh? <sighs> Stays long, this high. March, it's a green, muddy months down below. Some folks like it. Farmers. You have done well to keep so much hair when so many's after it. I hope you will fare well. Great film, that is. I had the soundtrack album on vinyl for the longest time and lost it somewhere. Goodness alone knows where. I suspect a friend of mine pinched it. I'd love to get a hold of it again. That's my uh, second recommendation tomorrow afternoon, ITV4 240. My third and final recommendation is Sunday night on Talking Pictures TV. And it's followed by a really interesting film, also starring Robert Redford, with Marlon Brando, Jane Fonda, I think Robert Duvall's in it, and also Angie Dickinson, called The Chase about a convict on the run, and Marlon Brando's a sheriff, kind of half reluctantly trying to catch him. Forget that, though. Five past ten, Terry Jones directs, Julie Waters stars as a woman called Cynthia Payne. Now, I suspect you're too young to remember when Cynthia Payne was the queen, in fact, the madam of tabloid newspapers in this country. Can you remember Cynthia Payne, uh, Van? I knew the name, but I think it predates me, to be honest. I did not know at all. I just, I'd heard of her, but I did not know. This is a woman whose life as a brothel keeper, not to put too fine a point, and it's inspired not one but two films. She's played by Emily Lloyd as a younger Cynthia Payne in the film Wish You Were Here on the South Coast mm. of Britain. One thing. And then this is the film of her career as, as I said, somebody who arranged what they used to call sex parties. She got tabloid fame because at the time it was claimed, although she said in the court that was erroneous, that she would take luncheon vouchers, which are a weird form of kind of tax-free benefit which your boss could give you some cafes and some restaurants took luncheon vouchers. She would take that from for personal services, not from her, but from her various girls and women who worked alongside her. It's very funny, not exactly saucy, quite sad in some ways, because she's doing this because she's desperate for her son, a legitimate son, to be regarded as somebody respectable. She pays for private school education, even though she's making her money by doing what she's doing with other women. Some great characters in this. It's a cracking film. It's on, on film, uh, on Talking Pictures TV, uh, it's on tomorrow night at tw uh, five past ten. I do apologise, stumbling over it. Before the chase, up against it on film four, you got Brassed Off, which is of the same era, slightly uh, later, same kind of feel. And I haven't got a clip, and I haven't got the normal trailer. I've got a trailer that was released in some cinemas of Terry Jones trying to explain to a U audience, i.e., under twelve audience, what personal services is all about. He's choosing his words carefully. The film is funny. The trailer is funny too. Over to Terry Jones. Hello. My name's Terry Jones, and I'd like to welcome you to this use certificate trailer promoting the film that I've just directed, and which is rated 18. That is for adults only. <laughs> now, because this is a use certificate trailer, there are, of course, limits to what I can tell you about the film. I can, for example, tell you its title. It's called Personal Services. 
but I can't actually tell you what it's about. Similarly, I can't show you any of the best bits. I mean, I suppose I could show you a bit like this. But it would be pretty pointless. Oh, on the other hand, I could show you this bit, which is really funny, I think. But as I can't show you what the lady's actually looking at, it won't mean very much. Ah! Oh dear, I don't think this trailer's working very well. Um, look, to be quite honest, the, the whole problem is that personal services is all about... Ah! What's the right showing that? And in fact, at the end of the trailer, we get the Cherry Jones Monty Python punchline. Here we go. Stop, 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 stop. I think we'd better stop this use certificate trailer there. <laughs> So if you want to see for yourselves all the things we can't show you in this new certificate trailer, come and see Personal Services at your local knocking shop now. A cinema, cinema, damn, ruined it. Oh, my God, we'll have to do the whole thing again. You'll be amazed at the people who enjoy Personal Services. Rated. 18. A bit like my voice this week would have had a sore throat. <laughs> Fine old, I mean, not a masterpiece, but it's a very, Julie Waters is fantastic in it, and it's quintessentially British, even, I would say, quintessentially English film. That one is my final recommendation. Where are you taking us in this out of this world experience you've got planned for us, Van Connor? I'm taking you to Fury 160, uh, 161 or 160, I forget the name of the planet, uh, from Alien 3, which I, it, I absolutely love this movie. And it got a kicking when it came out, but it's been, it's got a sort of revisionist, uh, look in recent years. It's the, the third and probably the darkest, uh, certainly the bleakest of all the Alien movies. David Fincher's, uh, big screen directorial debut from 1992. It drove him to the brink of psychosis. He refused to work with 20th Century Fox for a long, long time over this eventually reconciling that to make Fight Club seven years later. And the plot sees uh, Ellen Ripley, Sigourney Weaver, um, crash land, fo you know, following the events of Aliens. The pod she is in crash lands on a prison planet. However, she's also brought, unknowingly brought, a passenger along for the ride in the form of another xenomorph alien, which sets about offing the convicts. Like sort of, sort of con religious, sort of, you know, almost monk-like convicts taking them out one by one. This time, there's no weapons. This time, there's a whole big facility to go through. There's all the air vents, all the shafts, all the melting facilities for this alien to wander around in. It's really dark, really big, and also really British. It's got a very, very British car, as you said, like Brian Glover, uh, Charles Dance, people like that. Paul McGann, who, mm. who focuses in the clip, we're, who's the focus of the clip we're about to, to talk about. Um, so, this is on ITV4 on Sunday night at 10 o'clock. Absolutely brilliant. If you can see the, the, the full extended cut at any point, the, the, the work print, as it's called, it's a much better version that makes some changes, even changes how the alien's actually born in the film. Uh, but controversial, um, I don't think it's much of a hot take to say this is underrated and quite a banger, but I've got a clip for you to say, uh, Sunday night, ITV4, at 10pm you can see this. Uh, in the clip, I've got Ellen Ripley basically just unveiling to the prison warden and his, uh, his underling, played by Ralph Brown, just what it is that they're up against. On a prison planet, everyone can hear you scream. Let me see if I have this correct, Lieutenant. It's an eight-foot creature of some kind with acid for blood, and it arrived on your spaceship. It kills on sight and is generally unpleasant. And of course, you expect me to accept all this on your word. No, I don't expect anything. Quite a story, Mr. Aaron. Right, sir. It's a beauty. Never heard anything quite like it, sir. Expect not. Tell me, Lieutenant, what would you suggest we do? Well, what kind of weapons have you got? This is a prison. It's not a good idea to allow prisoners access to firearms. It keeps them from killing you. Fear? Fear. They don't know the meaning of fear. What I loved about the Alien, that first trilogy, is that it's not really a trilogy in any normal cinematic sense, is it? They couldn't, they're very different films. The first one is what it is, great film, very mm. cross but Then you've got Aliens, which is a fantastic bug hunt, kind of a, a brilliant, brilliant film in its own way. And then this one could not be more different. You know, it's a fantastic testament to the kind of, the, the power of cinema to take one central theme and to treat it in so many different ways. A great film, Aliens 3. Oh, yeah. And, of course, Fincher goes on from this to then direct Seven, yeah. which is just one of the all-timers. Like, I love Seven, but 
that sensibility is found here in Alien 3. I absolutely love this movie. I'm going to rewatch it. Like, literally, when I come off, off now, I'm, I'm going to go and rewatch it. I, I, I love say, this movie. Me too, when it comes out on Sunday night, because I've not seen it since it came out of the cinema. And I remember at the time, there was some people in the cinema, probably about a third of us thought, this is fantastic. And the rest of it, you know, because the second one was so good <laughs> in its action packed way. I'd have liked more mm. of the same of that, but this is, you know, a different direction. Now, tell us about off screen your podcast, which drops for you and Adam, I think, later on today, doesn't it, this morning? Yep, we're back at 8 a.m. on podcast platforms, and this week we get to talk about a new Richard Linklater movie, Hitman, with uh, with Glenn Powell, and the new killer spider movie, Sting, which is really fun. I have to say, that's this will be a good time. And uh, advance, um, maybe an advanced verdict on it. But have you seen the Ke- uh, Kevin Costner new western, the start of that kind of quadrilogy? Whatever, it's going to be Horizon. Have you seen any of that yet? Yeah, Horizon, an American saga. No, I have not. It's only screened at Cannes as far. I think it's a CinemaCon and Cannes. I think are the only places uh, it's been screened so far. But it's coming up in, I think, in the next month. So I am looking forward to that. You know what, Paul? It seems like a film you and I should go to the premiere, to, premiere together for, I think. If we, if we can't get to the premiere, even going to a normal cinema would be fantastic with it. We'll, that's a date, Van. We'll make that happen. Meanwhile, Van's back with us next week, of course. Do check out off-screen his podcast dropping later on this morning, 8am-ish 8, 8 roughly. But also his film recommendations for this week. Three belters, three from him, three from me. We meet in the middle. The choice is yours. And we're live, my friends, till five.